Hey everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video will definitely have a different tone to it. And I was honestly pretty nervous about posting this video of my opinion with everything going on, but I felt it would be wrong to one, be silent, and two, post a video that pretty much ignores everything going on. So I decided to take the time to a lot of research over the past week, including up until 3 a.m. last night. And I have contacted friends and family and law enforcement and in different states. And I've asked them for their inputs, for stories, for videos, for articles, for books, because I wanted to understand, instead of just spewing more ignorance, I wanted to really understand and not just react, I think, what makes me so nervous is everyone's social media is just bashing each other and so angry with each other. Friends that I've known for years are blocking each other because they don't agree 100% of that person's opinion. And it, it, it bothers me a lot because instead of listening, we're reacting. We've already chosen what side we're on and that means if they're not on our side, they're against us. So instead of just posting an opinion, I want to post positivity. I want to post at something educational and something that maybe keeps history from repeating itself. So that's kind of what I'm trying to understand in this video. The only thing that I ask of you is that if you leave comments below, whether it's here on the YouTube channel or on my Instagram, I ask that you be kind and respectful of each other's opinions because that is the beauty of America. You have the right to speak because you have the First Amendment rights. You have the right to protest and I think it's beautiful. But I ask you to not put anybody else down if they don't understand. Help them understand. So these protests have all been honoring the man who was murdered, George Floyd, who died at the hands of law enforcement officers. And I think that while it's beautiful to honor his memory, I also think that this was the breaking point for a lot of people. And I've tried to understand why, like how far does it go? So I reached out to a friend of mine who's really big into history. And he explained to me, he goes, Dasha, he's like, during the time of slavery, law enforcement was a tool of oppression and there are so many underlying issues that just have not been addressed properly we just swept it under the rug and pretended oh it's not happening and we've turned a blonde eye to it and i kind of see what he's talking about because when i kept doing my research i've noticed that we we did that with the japanese americans after pearl harbor with the jews with the lgbtq community with the women and it's mind-boggling. It really is. So I am coming here telling you that I understand that I may not ever completely understand what you're going through, but I am coming to the table to listen to what you have to say. But please listen to what I have learned and let me know if something doesn't seem right to you. But that's what this channel is about. That's what this platform is about to educate ourselves to enlighten each other to bring positivity so you honestly may be looking at the uh color of my skin and saying she she doesn't understand she'll never understand what i'm going through and you could not be further from the truth because i'm an i'm an immigrant i'm a russian jew who came here with her mother and grandparents and we were dead poor my mother came here to live the American dream, but how do you do that when you don't even speak the language, but you want better for your family? How do you do that when you're ostracized from your community and you don't know who to turn to? You're honestly isolated. My grandparents, best example, my grandparents were in the Holocaust. So that is best example of what it means to follow a leader blindly and what it means to completely oppress an entire race because of whatever BS reason you have. I don't, to this day, I've heard many reasons why nobody likes the Jews uh, during the time of Hitler. 
But what I don't understand is why we are pretending it doesn't exist anymore. We need to keep re learning and educating ourselves so history doesn't keep repeating itself. That's what this is about. I mean, look at this, we're in the 21st century and how many times is the bad guy a Russian with a really bad accent? I mean, it's funny, but at the same time, look at the portrayal. It It's literally putting it in your mind that this is what all Russians are. And that's not true. Some of us come here. We left communism to embrace what democracy has to offer, to embrace the First Amendment right, your right to protest, things you don't have in other countries. So when we saw the tragic video of George Floyd being murdered at the hands of law enforcement, we emulated with him. As a black person, you may have said, that's my brother, or that could have been me. As a white person, you may have said, well, I'm a helpless bystander, I wish I did something. And as a cop, you knew that it went against your code. And so we all kind of like reacted and split. We watched the same video and we all reacted to it. And somehow we decided that all three of these points were different positions, but I'm not sure that they are. I think we all reacted with disgust and, and in shock. And I absolutely 100% agree that these officers need to be held to the highest extent of the law, all four of them. No politician, no law enforcement officer, despite whatever brotherhood you have, is above the law in any way. They make everybody else look bad who's taken a code of honor, of ethics. And I think Thomas Paine <laughs> said it best, a body of men holding themselves accountable to nobody ought to not be trusted by anybody. So last night I was watching a video on, actually a news on Instagram, and it was where the National Guard was talking to the protesters and the girl was like, don't you see what's going on? Don't you see what's going on? They didn't respond with anger, which I appreciated. Not only that, they said, she's like, walk with us, show us, show us that you're on our side. And he's like, I can't leave my post, but I will walk with you to there and back, but I have to protect these businesses. And she didn't quite understand because she's like, you should be protecting us. And he goes, I am. And instead, the one other protester said, take a knee. And they all did. So what happened there was they compromised. Yes, he is trying to protect these protesters because they are doing it peacefully. But they're trying to protect them from the looters, the people looting, the people causing havoc over there. That's what they're protecting you from. But they compromised with you. They showed you that they are on your side, but they also have orders and Maybe you may not understand that as a civilian, but maybe they are trying to understand you. And I found it so beautiful. I was also um, listening to the fact that the protests in Dallas are being held by the sheriff. Like hats off to you. You are showing your people what it means to be a leader. You are right there with them in front. And I, and I respect that 100%. Um, I don't know if some of you have heard, but a retired cop was actually just killed while trying to stop looters at a pawn shop. He bled to death. There should be an outrage there too. There should absolutely be an outrage because that same justice applies to David Dorn as it does to George Floyd because they are both human beings and they both tried to do what was right and I respect that. There is a rational solution to every problem, but dividing a nation for a political gain would bring the rise of anarchy. And that was said by Officer Park. Again, I am writing and stating quotes from all different types of people because I believe that they see things that maybe some of us, including myself, are missing. So what I think he's trying to say is that we must stand as a nation we will overcome this, not as cops, not as black people, not as white people, but just as people. <sighs> so looking at everything kind of being destroyed, 
around us and it feels like everything's kind of falling out of place. Uh, the question I've been asking myself is what are we doing moving forward and what can we do? And I was scrolling through Facebook and I came across a post from the chief of police in uh, the Linden Police Department in Union, New Jersey. And I wanted to read this out loud instead of summarizing it and I'll be posting it as well. But I want, I think this is kind of a good place to start of law enforcement officials being held accountable for their actions and also proper training. So listen, in the years that followed, we have developed one of the most progressive training programs in the state. Officers regularly receive enhanced scenario-based use of force training and more Linden police officers are trained in de-escalization and crisis intervention than in any other department in Union County. We're the first department in Union County to implement widespread use of body-worn cameras and our internal affairs unit has been recognized by the Union County Prosecutor's Office as a model across the county. The message is clear. We will not tolerate misconduct. He goes on to explain it, and again, I'll post it, but I like what he said. As chief of police, I vow that the Linden Police Department will always be willing to participate in meaningful dialogue. We will continue to promote equality, tolerance, and empathy in our community through every action and I call upon all of our community to report any officer who acts contrary to these values. You deserve better and we expect better. I applaud the Linden Police Department for writing that, for saying that, and for setting that precedent and maybe hopefully other police departments will follow because I think right now the civilians, the citizens want to feel confident enough to know that the police, that the military, that federal, state, local are not against them, that they're with them on this. And I think it's real, I think it's going to go a long way in restoring that trust between the two. What you can do in the meantime is vote. Vote, write to your congressman, talk to your police department. Good cops also need to be speaking up because one bad seed is one bad too many and it sets a bad precedent i think it was, was it jimmy fallon who said yeah i mean one bad seed is bad but it's like saying one bad pilot well you're taking all of the passengers down with you so one bad pilot is too many so one bad cop is too many um i've also looked up ways you can help in your community to clean up so i'll be posting that as well and honestly what i've seen is across the country communities are bonding together and to clean up the cities and I'm just impressed how people are coming together. I'm impressed how Paris is standing together with us, how other countries are coming to help us. So what I'm asking you to do is I want you to go out there and maybe make friends with a cop, maybe vice versa. I want you to listen because it's about protecting integrity. It's about providing tangible results and not letting politics take over. And I think Gandhi said it best, be the change you want to see in the world. And I want to see in this lifetime, in the 21st century, that we are more worried about deadly hornets than we are about racism because it shows me that history hasn't quite caught up and we need to deal with this right away. So, Thank you everyone for taking the time to listen and I honestly really do look forward to your stories, your experiences. Put them in the comments below. Write to me on Instagram at Dasha Lifestyler. I want to hear them and I want to repost them because I feel like this is our time that we have a voice and we really want to be heard. So from the aorta to the apex. I love you guys with all my heart. Stay safe out there.